on day one, I spawned in as Goku. I didn't have long to look around, though, because suddenly the ground began to shake. I ran outside and saw the entire world look like it was in ruins. I spotted my friend Piccolo and quickly ran to him. Hey, what's going on? Why is there so much destruction? Bozo, come with me quick. Someone gathered all seven of the Dragon Balls. Oh, great. I flew off following Piccolo. We didn't have to travel far, and we saw Shenron the Dragon had been summoned. But by who? Finally, I get my wish. This world will be mine at last. I I charged that cell to try and stop him, but it was too late. He began using his wishes. I wish for all the threats to me to be at their weakest form. Your wish has been granted. Suddenly, there was a large flash of light and an explosion. I was launched off of the world and sent flying into space. I crash landed far away from my home and realized that wait, I'm a child again. Is this really what my weakest form is? I began to search the strange new world. Since I was a child now, I only had five hearts. I needed to find a way to gain my strength back. I looked around the world and had no idea what I would be able to do. I tried to fly. Oh man, I'm not able to. I noticed I was starting to starve too. I need to find food. I spotted a bull in the middle of the field. Okay, this should be a piece of cake. I began to charge at him and try to attack him using my super strength, but realized most of my strength was gone. This isn't good. The bull began to charge at me. He dealt some serious damage. I had to run, but oh, he was chasing me. I ran into a forest and eventually was able to lose the bull. Whew. That was a close one. Since I didn't have my strength, I knew that I was going to need to find some other way to get stronger. I began to chop some trees down and use the wood to create a crafting table. Afterwards, I crafted myself a set of wooden tools. Hopefully, this can help me regain my strength. I set off to find my friend Piccolo. I just hope he's not in his weakest form as well. On day three, I traveled throughout the night and eventually came across a village. I saw Piccolo was there. He was fighting a dinosaur. You beast. You will not harm this village anymore. I stepped in to try and help, but the dinosaur turned on me and knocked me back. I was far too weak to fight against him. Don't worry, Fuzo. I have this hand. A few more hits, and he took out the dinosaur. Piccolo, I'm so weak, but I don't think I'm going to be stuck in this form forever. I can sense that your power is still within you, Fozo. You must train to regain your strength. Piccolo took me inside the village and began to cook some of the dinosaur meat. He gave me the meat and told me to eat it. I did as I was told. After eating, I was starting to feel much stronger. Wow, I guess I was just hungry. Thank you for that. I really needed it. Thankfully, even though I was reduced to my weakest form, Piccolo was still at full strength. I guess Cell didn't consider him as much of a threat as I was. It was getting late though, so I decided to rest in the village for the night. On day four, I woke up and asked Piccolo if he knew any way I would be able to gain my strength back. The easiest way for you to regain your strength in this form would be to acquire a weapon. I remember when I originally began my training as a child. I always used my trusty bow staff. That's my next goal. I'm gonna need to recreate one in order to fight. That's a great idea, Fozo. Before that, I was going to need a place to stay. The village was crowded, so I wanted to create my own base. I found a nice place close to the village to start building. I began to build myself a small shelter and crafted a few chests with the leftover wood. I wanted to be close to Piccolo. I knew I would need him in case of another attack. Once my base was finished, I set off to mine stone. I gathered as much of it as I could and returned to my base. I used some of the stone to craft some furnaces. So when I found iron, I would have a place to smelt it. I heard a large rumbling in the sky though and wondered if that was Cell. I know I need to stop him because who knows what planet he plans on destroying next. I then used the remaining stone along with some of my leftover wood to craft myself a stone set of tools. And look at that. I even made myself a stone bow staff. Now, now I had the weapon I needed to begin my training. On day five, Piccolo woke me up and told me that we were going to go train. The best way for you to become stronger is to fight stronger opponents. So I need you to go into the jungle and fight a beast in there. All right, sounds good. You're coming too, right? No can do, Fozo. You need to do this on your own. Are you sure, Piccolo? What if this doesn't even make me stronger? Piccolo insisted. I left for the jungle, and when I arrived, a herd of sheep was being attacked by a jungle cat. Hey, leave those sheep alone. I attacked the jungle cat using my wooden bow staff. The Jungle Cat took some damage, but wasn't going down. I was starting to get angry. Leave these sheep alone. I started to feel power dwell within my body and turned back into my adult form. I even had 10 hearts again. I hit the tiger with my stone bow staff and easily took it down. It looks like I did get my old strength back and I can even fly again. The sheep thanked me for saving them and decided to come back with me to base. I was traveling back to the village to show Piccolo I'd regained some of my strength, but when I arrived, it was under attack. I saw Piccolo fighting with Frieza. Piccolo was no match for Frieza and was being overpowered. Stop! Fozo, I should have known you would be close by. What are you doing here? I have been reduced to this weakened form 
and need all of the Dragon Balls to obtain my strength back. There is a Dragon Ball at this village, and I must obtain it. Not if I have anything to say about it. I charged at Frieza, thinking with my newfound power I would be able to defeat him. But it clearly wasn't hurting him that much. He was still incredibly strong. You pathetic weakling. Even at my weaker form, you are still no match for me. He was right. I was no match for him. He <laughs> laughed, and I fell to the ground and blacked out. Where am I? Am I back on Earth? What is going on here? I saw a village completely destroyed. Who could have done this? Suddenly, there was a purple light in the sky. What is that? I got teleported in the middle of space and Cell was there in front of all the planets. Cell, what are you doing? <laughs> You're too late, Fuzzy. I am the most powerful being in the entire universe. What? This can't be true. Now, witness the power of perfection. Suddenly, there was a huge explosion, and all the planets were destroyed. Millions of souls flooded out, and all I can do was watch while Cell absorbed all of them. No! On day eight, I woke up back in my base. Ugh. What happened? I noticed Piccolo was in my base and asked him if everything was okay. You put up a good fight, but in the end, Frieza overpowered us and took the Dragon Ball. Oh no. We must stop him from getting the other ones too, or he might become too powerful. We have to find the other Dragon Balls before he does. First, we need to help these villagers. Piccolo and I returned to the village and noticed how much destruction Frieza had caused. We set out to gather material in order to build back the damage that he'd done. Once we had enough, we returned to the village. The two of us began to rebuild it. The villagers were extremely grateful for us helping them. Afterwards, I built a small pen at my base for the sheep to live in using the leftover wood we had gathered. I knew here they would be safer and protected from the monsters that roamed in this world. On days 9 to 10, Piccolo and I were talking, but was interrupted by a villager arriving at my base. Aww. The villager explained that another village had spotted Frieza traveling toward a snow biome. They believed one of the Dragon Balls is located somewhere there. I thanked the villager and knew where I needed to go. I told Piccolo to stay and take care of the village while I located the Dragon Ball. Before I left, I set off toward a nearby cave and began searching for iron. I didn't have to look very long before I found some. I smelted the iron and then used it to create an iron pickaxe as well as an iron bow staff. This should help me in case I have to fight Frieza for the Dragon Ball. With the leftover iron, I also crafted a bucket. I'm definitely going to need this when I start a farm at my base. There's only one thing left to do though, so I flew off toward the ice biome. I arrived in the snow biome when I spotted a group of people fighting. I flew in closer and realized it was Vegeta. He was fighting off with two of Frieza's henchmen. <laughs> if it isn't the weak Fozo, come to save the day. You stand no chance. Vegeta and I began a fight against the duo. I used my bow staff to hit them, and I can tell it hit much harder than my stone one. These guys are nothing compared to Frieza. Eventually, I was able to take down one of them. Vegeta and I ran at the final henchman and made quick work of him. I had it handled. I didn't need your help. Yeah, you can say that, but you looked like you were getting overpowered. It seemed like it was the least I can do, all right? But hey, look, I'm looking for the Dragon Ball that's located in this biome. Seems like we're both looking for the same thing. Vegeta told me that he tracked the Dragon Ball to an ice castle, and it wasn't too far from here. The two of us flew off toward the castle. On days 13 to 14, Vegeta and I went inside the castle, and it was completely covered in ice. There was an earthquake within it, too, and we heard explosions in the distance. We need to keep going. We went deeper into the castle, and the explosions got louder. Suddenly, the earthquakes and explosions stopped, and it was completely quiet. We made it to the end, and Frieza quickly flew past us and out of the castle. Get out of my way! I wonder what his problem is. The Dragon Ball was right there, but there was a giant armored knight guarding it, so that's why Frieza was so scared. Vegeta and I attacked the knight, but the knight took no damage. The knight swung his axe and knocked me back away from him and Vegeta. That swing took more than half of my hearts away. I watched Vegeta attack the knight, but he couldn't deal any damage on that thing either. The knight knocked Vegeta back with his sword. He was going to defeat us. I used my bow staff and quickly hit the knight in the back, defeating him. Uh, are you okay, Vegeta? I'll be fine, Fozo. Let's just get the Dragon Ball. We grabbed the Dragon Ball and flew out of the castle. Vegeta also gave me a tracker and told me that this would be an easier way to find the rest of them. We both decided to go our separate ways. He flew off to heal while I flew back to base. On days 15 to 16, I returned to base with the Dragon Ball. I then began to construct a giant Dragon Ball that would serve as a place to store all of them. This was only one out of the seven I was going to need to get to obtain my wish. After starting my Dragon Ball Shrine, I decided it was time to upgrade my base. I began by expanding my home and making myself a nice big bed to sleep on. Next, I added a room just for storage. I filled the room with a bunch of chests. I then added more furnaces so I'd be able to smell iron even faster. Once I finished adding the furnaces, I realized it was a great time to go and gather more. I set off to the cave. It wasn't long before I found some. I brought it back to base to smell and then use it to craft myself an iron chest plate as well as iron boots. It was getting late so I went to sleep for the night.
I will consume you. With your power, I will become unstoppable. We have to split up. If we are together, it will be easier for him to get the both of us. You're right. On days 17 to 18, Piccolo returned to base and informed me about Cell. He told me that Cell is hunting down androids 17 and 18. Oh no. If he absorbs those two, he'll be back to his perfect form. I started to leave the base, but Piccolo flew in front of me. And where do you think you're going? To go and stop Cell. He can't catch those two. You need to focus on getting your strength back, Bozo. I'll find android 17 and 18. <sighs> Fine, Piccolo. He flew off out of the base. This is so frustrating. I need to get my mind off of this. I set off and began to collect dirt as well as seeds from the surrounding areas. I returned back to my base and used the dirt to set up a nice farm area. I crafted a stone hoe and began to plant my seeds in the farm. I connected the farm to the sheep pen in order to give them some food as well as a larger place to roam. I was hanging around my base when suddenly the Dragon Ball tracker began to go off. It had located another Dragon Ball. I quickly gathered some of my stuff and flew off to find where it was. I was flying across biomes, continuing to follow the tracker when I came to a massive mountain biome. The tracker started to go off like crazy. I must be getting close. I didn't want Frieza sneaking up on me and attacking me again. I didn't think I would be any match for him still. I flew around the mountain. Once I reached the top of it, I noticed someone was waiting for me. It was Cell. What are you doing here? The same could be asked of you. I tracked one of the androids I needed to this location, but I lost his trail. You are almost a better find. Cell began to fly at me and I flew towards him. He clashed, causing a massive explosion. Cell looked down on me. I hadn't hurt him at all. <laughs> you are still weak. You haven't gained any of your power back. I had to flee. I flew back toward my base. Come back to me when you're ready for a real fight. I returned to base, angry for my encounter. I can't believe I ran away from a fight like some coward. I'm so weak, but what am I supposed to do? I need to find a way to get stronger, and I must stop Cell. First things first, I'm starving. I went to the farm and took a sheep to make mutton. I cooked the meat and ate. Wow, I feel so much better. After eating, I decided to gather more animals for my farm. I used some seeds to lure chickens back and made a nice pen for them to stay in. I went inside and started to expand my base. I added an extra room just in case Vegeta wanted to come and stay here. I started to think of the best way to get stronger. How did I do it all of those years ago? I looked at my suit. That's it. I need to get back to the basics. And the best person to help me do that is none other than my master, Roshi. I left the base and began to fly toward Master Roshi's island. On days 24 to 26, I arrived at Master Roshi's house. Oh, there you are. Master Roshi, I need your help. Little turtle, you have returned. I have not heard that in a long time. I need your help to become more powerful. Cell and Freezer are back, and I have become so weak after Cell used the Dragon Balls to wish my powers away. Then we'll need to begin your training once again. Master Roshi and I went to the beach and spent time meditating together. He said it would help clear my head. He then asked me to fly as fast as I could and try to travel the world. I spent time flying through the air and did my best to increase my speed. I could feel myself growing stronger. Good. You are now ready for your final training. Roshi began to charge at me. I used my bow staff to hit him and then flew away and came back for more strikes. I could feel that I was more powerful than he was and hit him one final time. All right, all right, stop. Your, your training is complete. I can teach you no more. In order for you to become more powerful, you will have to align Lock your super cyan again. Thank you, master. Suddenly, my tracker started to go off. Another dragon ball had been located. I was closing in on the location the tracker was pointing me. I suddenly saw a massive city, but it was in total ruins. There was destruction everywhere. I flew into the city, and not to my surprise, Frieza was there with two of his henchmen. Frieza, I should have known you would be here. The pathetic Fozo, here for another beating? I looked around and noticed that all the people were gone. What did you do to everyone? They wouldn't tell me where the Dragon Ball was, so I had to do what I had to do. We'll handle him, boss. You go and find the other Dragon Balls. Frieza flew off while his goons started to attack me. They threw at me and hit me, taking away a bunch of my hearts. I started to feel myself growing so angry. I felt a surge of energy flow through my body, and I went Super Saiyan. Whoa, I have 20 hearts now. Oh no, his power level is growing. I flew directly at them and took one of them down with a good hit. You're next. The henchman flew at me and I was able to easily avoid his attack. I used my bow staff to take him down. The villagers hadn't told Frieza where the key was, but I knew it was still here because of the tracker. After some searching, I was able to find the Dragon Ball in the remains of the buildings. With the Dragon Ball in hand, I flew home. I arrived back at my base and began to work on my Dragon Ball shrine. I continued to expand it out. I knew eventually it would need to hold all
all seven of the Dragon Balls so I can regain my power. I place the Dragon Ball next to the other. Two down, only five more to go. Then, I'll be able to defeat both Frieza and Cell. My run-ins with Frieza made me realize I need to get more upgrades if I wanted to stop him. I headed to a cave nearby and began to look for iron and diamonds. I did find a bunch of iron, but I wasn't able to locate any diamonds. After some more searching, I finally found some. Wait, only two? Ah, this is gonna have to do for now. I returned back to my base and completed my armor set. I then used my diamonds to craft a diamond bow staff. Nice. I'm definitely on my way to defeating them. Now you have nowhere to run. You are mine now. I'm not going down without a fight. I feel so powerful. I need to test my power. On days 33 to 35, Ugh. is that Piccolo? Piccolo was at my base and he looked badly injured. What happened? I was tracking Cell as he was following Android 17. I wasn't able to keep up with him, but eventually I did find him. It looked like he had changed. He laughed at me, saying he was almost at full strength and would be unstoppable once he was there. I wasn't sure what happened to the android, but I can only assume it was not good. I tried to fight back against him, but he was too powerful. He beat me into the ground and then laughed as he flew off, saying he was going to find something much stronger to test his power. We have to go after him, Bozo. I have to go after him. You are far too weak to be any help right now. You must rest and get your strength back. I'm gonna find out what he's up to. Piccolo told me where he last saw Cell, and I flew off to confront him. I was flying where Piccolo had encountered Cell when I spotted him. He was fighting something. It was a wither. Cell charged at the wither, and he took it down with a single hit. How did he get so powerful? I flew down and landed near him. Do you like my new form, Bozo? How did you get so powerful? I absorbed the worthless Android 17. Now look at me. I'm not even done gaining power. What do you mean you're not even done? Once I find and absorb Android 18, there will be no one to stop me. You're not even worth my time. Have fun with these. He flew off. What did he mean? Have fun with what? Suddenly, a group of withers started to attack. They did some serious damage just by my iron armor. I charged at one and started to fight it using my bow staff. But these guys had a ton of hearts. I flew in the air and delivered a serious blow, taking one of them out. The others continued to attack, and I was low on hearts. I was not nearly as strong as Cell. I had to retreat back to my base. I arrived back at home, feeling extremely defeated. I needed upgrades, so I went back into the mines and began to search for diamonds. I looked for a while and eventually was able to find enough to craft myself a diamond chest plate. This should help me withstand some more attacks. I checked up on Piccolo to see how he was doing. He looked like he had regained some of his strength. Is there anything I could do to help you? The dinosaur meat. It'll help me gain my strength back. I flew off to find a dinosaur. I finally spotted one and flew down and started fighting it. He charged at me, but I was so fast and able to avoid his attacks. I used my diamond bow staff to strike him and was able to take him down after a few good hits. I collected his meat and flew back home to cook it up. Once the meat was done, I I gave it to Piccolo, and he eagerly ate it. I hope this gets your strength back, buddy. Thank you, Vozo. I really appreciate your help. I can tell he was starting to grow stronger. I need you at full strength if we even stand a chance to defeat Cell and Frieza. On days 42 to 44, I woke up to the sound of pinging from the Dragon Ball tracker. I walked out of the base to use the tracker, but I couldn't follow it. For some reason, it just pointed up. Piccolo walked out of the base. Hey, are you okay? I'm good now, but I was trying to rest. What's with all that noise? I told Piccolo about the tracker, and he told me that it wasn't pointing up. It was pointing to his home planet, Namek. Ah, oh, man, we're gonna need a spaceship if we want to get there. Piccolo and I set off to the mines to gather the material we would need. We gathered as much iron as we could find, as well as a ton of redstone. After gathering all the materials, we headed home and began building the rocket. I said goodbye to Piccolo and hopped inside. I was off to planet Namek to find the Dragon Ball. On days 45 to 46, I arrived on planet Namek and began following the tracker toward the Dragon Ball. I arrived at a structure and the tracker began to ping erratically. Looks like I'm at the right place. I ran inside. There it is. But before I can get it, one of Frieza's goons showed up. You may have defeated Frieza's other henchmen, but you're no match for Captain Ginyu. Ginyu began to charge at me. He hit me and knocked me back. Wow, that actually hurt. I charged back at him, attacking him with my bow staff. That dragon ball belongs to Lord Frieza. This guy was tough, but I was much stronger than him. I flew into the air and landed on him, delivering the final blow. He was defeated, so I collected the dragon ball and began to make my way back to the ship. On days 47 to 50, I landed back and began to work on my Dragon Ball Shrine. I added some additional details as well as a place for my third Dragon Ball. I was gonna need to expand this even more eventually, but for now, it was good enough. Once I finished, Piccolo walked up to me. It looked like he was back at full strength. That rest was much needed. I feel a lot 
lot better. I'm glad to hear that. We have some work to do. Piccolo and I began to expand our base. We started by building not only my house, but as well as building a home for him to live in. There we go. That's much better. After building Piccolo a place to stay, we began to build a wall around the base. This would prevent any dinosaurs from entering and would hopefully slow down Cell or Frieza if they tried to attack. On days 51 to 53, I woke up to a massive explosion outside of my base. I ran outside and Frieza was there. You will pay for what you have done to my men. Frieza began to attack me. He was much more powerful than last time. I flew into the air, but he quickly hit me back into the ground. How did you become this powerful? I have acquired three of the Dragon Balls. Soon, I will be at full strength, and all my powers will be back. I flew back at Frieza, and was able to land a pretty good hit on him. I can tell my powers had increased too. Enough of this. He hit me directly into the ground. I was stunned, and I couldn't move. I could see he was preparing for a final attack. Stop! Wait, Vegeta, no! Vegeta flew in between us, and there was a large flash. Suddenly, I was awake. Where was I? I was standing in front of a massive blue snake. Vegeta, what happened? We lost. There's no hope for us. You can't talk like that, Vegeta. I tried to stop Frieza and save you, but I think we both were killed in the process. So, this is the afterlife. I guess we only have one option. We need to find King Kai and return to Earth. What's the point? It's over. We can't just give up now. We have to continue on. So, we're gonna do just that. I began to run at the snake and started to make my way across it. It was massive, and it looked like there was gaps in between that I would have to jump across. It was dangerous, but it was the only way out of the afterlife. I turned around and noticed Vegeta was following me, but for a second, he flashed out of existence. Oh no, Vegeta, if we don't get out of here soon, we will both perish here and be gone forever. Vegeta and I began to run as fast as we could, hopping from block to block to make our way to King Kai. I knew his planet would be located at the end. I just hope we can make it in time. We finally arrived at King Kai's planet and began to look for him. We approached his house and I called out to him. Oh no, what are you doing here? Couldn't you be saving the world? That's what we were trying to do, but we were kind of killed and sent here to the afterlife in the process. We need a way to get back and to stop Cell and Frieza before it's too late. I'll be able to send you back, but you're not ready yet. You must each venture out into this afterlife alone and defeat what is there. After that, you'll have to make the hardest choice of your life. I listened to what King Kai said and headed off into this strange afterlife world. Vegeta did the same, but we set off in different directions. I wonder what he meant by the hardest choice. I had traveled for what felt like days when I came across this strange emptiness. I was surrounded by darkness as far as I can see and it looked like I was alone. Hello, Fozo. I turned around and to my surprise, I was standing in front of myself. Hey, what's the meaning of this? You will never be strong enough to stop them. You are wasting your time. Just perish here. It'll be easier. Maybe he was right. I wasn't strong enough. How would I ever be able to overcome this? That's right. Let yourself fade away. The more he spoke, the more angry I became. I charged at myself, and when I reached him, he vanished. Was this what King Kai was talking about? I began to travel back toward his planet. I returned to King Kai's planet. As I was returning, I noticed Vegeta was returning as well. Vegeta, did you do what you had to? I believe so, although I'm not sure how I feel about it. I didn't have time to ask him about his journey. King Kai came out and confronted us. Since you're back, I assumed you were able to defeat what you saw in this world. Yes. Good. Then it is time to make the decision. I only have enough energy to return one of you to Earth. What? You never said this would be part of it. How would I be able to defeat Frieza and Cell without Vegeta? Ozo is the one that must return. Wait, what? What do you mean, Vegeta? I can't do it all alone. What I had to defeat was my own ego. I needed to come to terms with the fact that you are stronger than me you'll be able to defeat them alone. Vegeta, no, you can't do this. There will be another chance to bring him back. But for now, you are the one who will return. No, wait, stop. There was a blinding flash of light. At last, I have you. Now it's time to become perfect cell. No, stop. Now the whole world will be mine. <laughs> and on days 63 to 65, I woke up back at my base. I was in my bed and Piccolo was in front of me. I stepped outside and saw the destruction Frieza had caused to our base. Together, we went out and gathered the material we needed to repair it. We began by rebuilding my home and then Piccolo's house. After finishing rebuilding, I set off to a nearby cave and was able to find a ton of diamonds. I used the diamonds to finish my armor 
first set. I hope now I would have more of a fighting chance against Frieza. I returned back to where Piccolo was waiting for me, and he told me that he knew where the final Dragon Ball was. The Dragon Ball in the mountains. Frieza never located it. We have to get there quickly. Piccolo and I set off toward the mountains in search of the final Dragon Ball. Piccolo and I arrived at the mountain where the Dragon Ball was located. We began to search for it, and eventually we found it. It was right on top of the mountain. Before we were able to return to base, Cell showed up. He looked different, though. What happened? Do you like my final form? I need to test out my power. Cell started to fly directly at us. I began to fight Cell using my bow staff and tried my best to keep him away, but he was too fast. He kept getting close and taking away a ton of my hearts. This is what true power looks like. Before he can deliver the final blow, Piccolo returned. He began to fight against Cell, but he was clearly outmatched. You're not even worth my time. He hit Piccolo, and he dropped to the ground. Cell then walked over to the Dragon Ball and grabbed it. He flew off, and I rushed over to Piccolo. It's okay. He's gone now. Our time is over, Fozo. You must gather the remaining Dragon Balls and use them to unlock your power. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Piccolo, stay with me. You're gonna be there too, okay? Don't worry. I'm afraid this is the end for me, Fozo. No! I began to feel so much anger in my body and a big surge of energy. Suddenly, I was transformed into a Super Saiyan God. I had 30 hearts and I can feel myself growing so powerful. I'm gonna remember you, Piccolo. I flew off toward my base. I returned to my base and began to feel terrible for what had happened to my companion. He had sacrificed his own life to save me. I need to do something for him. I went out into the world and found a desert biome. I began to collect as much cactus as I could and then headed towards home. I smelted the cactus to create green dye and then used the dye on the sheep. I then collected their wool to use it to create a monument for Piccolo. I wanted him to be here with me even though he was gone. Suddenly, I heard the tracker going off. It had located the remaining Dragon Balls. What was the point in going after them if we all lost? I remembered though, with the wishes that Shenron could grant me, I could not only bring my full power back, but I could also restore Earth the way it was with all my friends back. I knew I would have to face Frieza and defeat him. I set off not knowing if I was ready, but I had no choice. It was now or never. On day 74 to 77, I arrived at the location the tracker had been sending me towards. It was an island with a massive volcano in the center of it. I flew to the top of the volcano, and not to my surprise, Frieza was there. This ends now, Frieza. Give me the Dragon Balls. You will have to take them from me, Fozo. Frieza then began to float into the air, and he summoned the power from the three Dragon Balls he had, and in a blinding flash of light, he changed. He was completely gold now. You don't stand a chance against me. Frieza began to fly toward me, and we started to fight. I was a lot stronger than I was when I faced him before. Frieza lunged at me and knocked me to the ground, but I got up quickly and continued to fight him. The battle felt evenly matched, but I started to feel something growing inside of me. A surge of energy took over my body. Kame! Kame! No! When the light dissipated, Frieza was gone. I looked around the volcano and found the three Dragon Balls that he had acquired. I only need the final one from Cell, and I'll be able to restore the world. I reached back at my base and began to work on my Dragon Ball shrine. I expanded it to house the three Dragon Balls that I had taken from Frieza, and even added the final spot for the seventh when I was able to locate it. I then took the time to upgrade my base. I started to expand out my home and make it feel more like what it had been before Cell destroyed it. Everything felt like it was getting close to being back to normal. I just needed to find where Cell and the final Dragon ball was. Suddenly, my Dragon Ball tracker started to go off. The final Dragon Ball had been located. I flew off following the tracker and eventually came across some strange structure in the desert. The Dragon Ball tracker began to ping intensely and I knew the Dragon Ball must be inside. I arrived at the temple and immediately noticed a Dragon Ball was in the center of the room. But before I can reach it... <laughs> We have been waiting for you to show up. I turned and noticed there was a group of cells. These ones were different though. They were smaller and had a blue color to them. Get in! The small cells began to rush at me and attack me. They were definitely not as strong as cell, but they were fast and had numbers. I started to fight back using my bow staff and was able to take out a few of them. All of them began to rush at me again and I was starting to lose hearts. I couldn't give up now. Not when I was so close to restoring everything. I continued to fight them and eventually took them all out. That was a close one. Good. You defeated my cell. Junior. I turned around and saw that Cell was standing right next to the Dragon Ball. What do you want? I want you back to your full power so I can really test how strong I am. Cell flew off and left me with the Dragon Ball. I ran up and grabbed it. Once I arrived at base, I went directly to the Dragon Ball shrine and put the final Dragon Ball there. I began to wait, but nothing happened. What was going on? Why is nothing happening? Come forth, Shenron, and grant my wishes. The ground began to rumble, and there was a blinding flash of light. I was suddenly in a completely different 
different place. And the world was dark. Right in front of me was Shenron. What are your wishes? I wish for all my powers to be restored to me so that I can defeat the monster of Cell. Wish granted. I felt so much energy and I knew that my powers were fully back. My next wish. I wish for the world to be restored and for my friends to be brought back. Your wish has been granted. Suddenly, there was another blinding light and the ground trembled. I was back at my base, except nothing looked any different. Did my wish fail? The dragon bolts had disappeared from the shrine. They must have been used. But why was the world not restored? Bozo, you did it! I turned around and saw Piccolo and Vegeta were there. It worked! My friends had been brought back from the dead. I'm so happy to see you guys. I could have found another way back, but I guess this works. Classic Vegeta. I'm just happy you guys are alive. Alright, listen guys. We need to defeat Cell and put an end to his madness once and for all. He has grown extremely powerful, but he made the mistake of letting me acquire the Dragon Balls to truly test his power. Do you know where he's gone? I don't, but I'm sure we're gonna find out soon enough. Fogo, Earth needs your help. I woke up and began to look around. What was going on? I am at my home world. I can sense Cell is back on Earth and he is attacking it. Earth needs you, Fozo. You must travel there and defeat him. But how? How will I do that? What if I'm not powerful enough to do it? You are more capable of defeating him if you believe. Now you must go. You don't have much time. I ran to Piccolo and Vegeta and told them that Cell was on Earth and he was starting to destroy cities. I explained to them that we need to act fast and get there quickly or else there was going to be no Earth left again. Once we were done, we boarded it and set off. I began to think back about all the challenges I'd faced throughout my 100 days, but nothing Nothing has stopped me or my friends before, and nothing is gonna stop us now. On day 100, we landed on Earth in the middle of a city that Cell was attacking. There was destruction everywhere we could see. Cell's <laughs> minions spotted us and began to attack. We started to fight back, and the three of us were able to easily take them on. Our victory was short-lived as we noticed a group of them attacking villagers. We rushed to save them, and we were able to take them down. Who will stop attacking the city as long as Cell is still alive? Fuzo, go and find him. We will hold the rest of them off for the villagers. I did as I was told and flew off to find Cell. I eventually found him as he was finishing destroying a house. Cell, this ends right now. <laughs> this is just the beginning for me. I'm glad you came to face your death. He rushed at me and hit me, sending me flying into a building. I got up, delivering a powerful blow. Ugh, your powers have increased. This will be an even fight now. We continued to fight, both of us hitting each other with powerful attacks, but neither of us was going to give up. He rushed at me and hit me to the ground. I felt weak and thought this might be the end, but I know that I can't give up now. I just can't. I have to believe in myself. Kame, Hame, Ha! I unleashed a massive blast of energy directly at Cell. Cell was defeated by the blast, and the world was finally saved. On day one, I spawned into a huge explosion outside. I rushed out to see what was going on. I saw my sensei, Kakashi, and he was fighting the dark ninja, Orochimaru. He stopped fighting and looked directly at me. You stand no chance to defeat me. This world will be taken over once my boss acquires your inner beast. Inner beast? Naruto, run! I will hold him off. I didn't have time to question what was happening, so I started to run as fast as I could. Whoa, I'm so fast. Uh, too fast. There's a cliff! I landed, and suddenly, there were two of me? Hey, what are you doing here? The clone didn't listen. He ran directly to a nearby village. He frantically then began to break one of the walls of the wooden houses. I started to chase after him, but once I got close, he disappeared. What? All the commotion caught the attention of some of the villagers, and they all came storming over to me. Get out of here, you monster! You're pure evil, and no one wants to be near you! I'm sorry, it wasn't me, it was just the clone. Leave! You can't control yourself! Leave now! I ran off as fast as I could. I guess I wasn't welcome anywhere. I was running, running away from the village as fast as I could. Eventually, I got tired and stopped. I realized I had wood my clone had taken from the villager's home. I used it to make a crafting table and crafted a wooden pickaxe. After, I started to mine some stone to create some stone tools. Right when I thought I was alone, a group of zombies came out of nowhere and started to attack me. Wait, what? How are you guys not burning in the daylight? I had to act quick and fight them off with my sword. They hit me a few times and I noticed because I was a child, I only had five hearts. I did my best to keep them Away. I was able to take them down, but I was so weak, and I noticed that I was starving too. I began looking around for a local ramen shop, but I was in the middle of nowhere. I spotted a group of sheep. I guess this is gonna have to do for now. I ran up and used my stone sword to defeat them. I gathered their meat and wool and started to eat it. It didn't do much, but it was enough to get my hearts back and stop me from starving to death. I ran off to find where Kakashi was. I hope he's okay. On day three, I found Kakashi in the forest. It looked like he was out getting supplies. I walked up to him. Hey, uh, Kakashi sensei, I had a pretty rough encounter 
encounter in the village over there. It seemed like everyone hated me. I don't know what I did to make everyone so hostile. That doesn't matter right now. The village needs our help, and we must get these supplies back in order to rebuild. I began doing as Kakashi said and worked with him to collect wood. I finally asked them how much wood and stone the village needed, and he told me that they needed 20 stacks of each. Kakashi, that's gonna take at least 100 of me to gather all that for the villagers. Hey, that was an idea. Step back, Kakashi. I'm gonna try something. Wait, Fozo, you're not ready to use that. I didn't listen, so I used my shadow clone jitsu, and look! I made a clone, and then another, and another. Fozo, stop! You're not powerful enough for this! Oh, yeah? Well, look at me go! I continued to make clones, until suddenly, I made a ton of them at once! Uh, oh, no, I started to feel weak. I think I'm gonna pass out. I came back to consciousness in a strange place. I was not sure where I was, but I looked around, and I saw that the moon was completely red? I continued to look, and I saw villagers, as far as I can see, standing perfectly still, frozen. I was terrified and confused. I turned around and saw a shadowy figure floating in the air. It was only a matter of time before Orochimaru perfected the reincarnation jutsu. A reincarnation jutsu? What's that? Who are you? What do you want from me? You are the key to unlocking my perfect world. A world where everyone is under my control and must do my bidding. All I need is you and your power. My power? What power? When the time is right, it will be mine. I will be the strongest ninja in the world. Okay, that's my cue to go. I began to panic, and I started to run away from the shadowy figure. But whatever direction I ran in, he was in front of me again. You think you can run away from your destiny? Uh, he lunged at me. I woke up in a panic. Where, where was I? I looked around, and I was back at my home in the Hidden Leaf Village. But just like Kakashi said, it was completely destroyed. I tried to find Kakashi. Oh, there he is. He was rebuilding a house. I ran to him and began telling him about my dream. There was this, this shadowy figure and he said he wanted to control everyone in the world. So, you've already started to see him. Who, Kakashi? I don't even know what's going on. Madara. I knew this day would come. He told me that he wanted to be the strongest ninja in the world. Well, I want to do that so I could defeat him. Good. He is pure evil and dangerous. So now it is time we begin your training. Because if he succeeds, then the entire world will be doomed. We began to train together. Kakashi explained to me the power I had accidentally used was the Shadow Clone Jitsu. I was definitely going to have to work on controlling it, though. He showed me how he controlled it and then sent me off to practice it a few times. After some struggling, I was able to do it on command. Look, Kakashi, I did it. Suddenly, something started to happen, and I grew into an adult Naruto. And look, I had 10 hearts too. After I upgraded, Kakashi and I spent the rest of the day putting all the fire in the village out. We also started to build up parts of the village as well. I even made myself a little home to stay in. That is more like it. I then began to ask him why all the villagers hated me and what Madara meant by my inner beast. In time, you will understand why the villagers are afraid of you. You're too young and not strong enough now. I wasn't happy with Kakashi's answer. I decided to head off back toward the village to find out. Out. On day six, I arrived at the village that had rejected me. I began searching around for any answers of what my inner beast was or why they had so much anger toward me. I snuck into a villager's house and looked around their chests, hoping to find any clues. I didn't find anything, but I was able to find a bunch of shurikens. These will surely come in handy while I master jutsu. I began to leave the village. As I was exiting, I saw the village suddenly was under attack. It was a raid from pillagers. The pillagers began swarming it and fighting their iron golems. I definitely did not want to be spotted here, but I had no choice. I jumped into action and started to use my sword to take down the pillagers. A ravager started to charge right at me. Uh, I had to use my shadow clone jutsu to help me fight. Me and myself were able to take down the ravager and the rest of the pillagers. Once everything was settled, I noticed all the villagers were outside. They all shouted at me. They called me a monster. So I began to leave, feeling even more defeated than I was when I first arrived. As I exited, I was stopped by one of them. She said the other villagers would come around eventually, and they just were afraid. She handed me a map and said if I traveled to the location on it, it would reveal more of my past to me. My past? I thanked the villager and set off to follow the map. On day seven, I made my way toward the location on the map. I should go find some food so that I'll have enough energy for the journey. I used my shurikens on a group of pigs to get some food. These things really do come in handy. I crafted myself a furnace and used it to cook the meat. As I continued to follow the map, Orochimaru ambushed me out of nowhere. Hello, Fozo. I think it would be your best interest to come with me. We have big plans for you. In your dreams. Orochimaru started to attack me, so I threw my shurikens at him, but he easily dodged them. Mm, those are cute, but you should try mine. He threw his own shurikens at me, and I was able to avoid the first wave, but one of them managed to hit me. Ow. Wow, I was really starting to 
feel funny. Thanks for making that so easy for me. Are these poison shurikens? That's not cool, dude. Uh, I woke up and found myself in... What is this? Is this like a lab? How did I get here? I kept looking around and I saw some of the villagers trapped in a cage. Oh, hey guys, I'll get you out of here. Ah, it's locked. I'll need a key to free them. I went down further into the lab and figured that this must be some sort of labyrinth. There are many paths that led into a dead end. This is annoying. There's gotta be something down one of these paths. Oh, nice. A light. I went down the path and it had stairs going down somewhere. It led me into a coliseum? Who has time to build this underground whoa a giant snake monster came out of nowhere and started lunging at me sorry buddy but i'm not snake food i threw my shurikens at the snake but it obviously did not deal that much damage the snake hit me with its tail and hurt me a lot i needed to take this monster down and fast i used shadow clone jutsu and made some clones but still it didn't do much the snake lunged and took all the clones down instantly it hit me with its tail again dealing more damage i've got to do something suddenly everything became blurry and when i was back what what happened i then noticed someone was watching me it's the guy from my dream what was he doing here i hope you enjoyed the show out of nowhere the floor beneath me gave out and i went falling i went through the floor opening and saw orochimaru what am i doing here and what's with all the monsters what you don't like that they're out during the day well that's too bad let me out of here you snake freak sorry but I can't do that. You'll be fighting these monsters over and over until you're nice and strong. Nice and strong? Why does everyone keep saying that? What do you mean? Why are you making me do this? He didn't listen though. And we started a fight. I will not let you get away with all of this. Orochimaru was definitely way stronger than me because he was doing a lot of damage and fast. Finally, he hit me and knocked me aside. In time. In time. Orochimaru left. I looked around the room and realized if he was right about me being stuck here forever. Suddenly, a blast happened and a figure appeared. Naruto, come quick. Kakashi? What are you doing here? No time. We need to get you out of here. Kakashi used his jutsu and opened a path for us to escape. Finally, we can leave all of this chaos behind. On day 10, we returned back to base to rest and recover. I had so many questions about the other day. Why did Orochimaru let me live? I can't just sit here and ponder. Come with me, Naruto. Let's build up your strength strengthen your appetite. Kakashi and I built a farm together. This should be able to feed both me and the nearby village. I walked over and saw that their entire village though was burned down because of the other night. They were trying to build up their houses again, but they weren't having much luck. I walked over to them and invited them back to our hidden leaf village. The villagers seemed iffy, but after they looked back at their home, they agreed. Aww. Yeah, yeah. I took them back home and built up a few houses for them to stay in. A few of them seemed really happy, but the rest were still not having it. I hope to eventually win them all over when I am I am the strongest ninja in the world. After helping out the villagers, I showed Kakashi the map the village had given me a few days ago. I told him that this was the reason I was traveling alone when Orochimaru attacked me. I think you should go. Maybe this place will help you get stronger and even reveal more of your past. I think you're ready to learn. Thank you, Kakashi. I prepared to follow the map again. I gathered some food from our farm and set off. I was heading over to the location when I realized that I should stock up on tools. I went into a cave and searched for some iron. I quickly mined some and then searched for some coal. Once I found that, I placed out a furnace and smelted it. With the iron, I was able to make myself an iron set of tools. I used the leftover of it to craft myself a set of iron boots. As I left the cave, I spotted Orochimaru. Ah, not again. I needed to hide quick. I noticed he was with a villager. Where could he be taking him? Orochimaru continued on with a villager, and I came out of my hiding spot. Wow, that was way too close of a call. I continued on following the map. I hope it had the answers I was looking for. On days 13 to 14, I finally made it to the location of the map. It was some sort of strange temple. I wonder why the villager sent me here. I headed inside and whoa, this place was crazy. After a quick look around, this place was a meditation site. Okay. Uh, I sat down in the middle of the site and concentrated really hard. I felt my body shake. And when I opened my eyes, I was inside some kind of a dark world. I saw a giant red barred prison in front of me. And I saw a giant orange fox behind the bars. What is sent you here? What do you want with me, Fozo? How do you know who I am. Why are you here? What is this place? Where do you think you are? This is your mind. My mind? Can you answer my questions? Who are you? Who I am does not matter. And you can thank your dear old dad 
for why I am in prison. He put me here before disappearing. My dad? I never really knew him. What do you know about him? Enough of this silly banter. Get lost, you weakling. The giant fox roared, and suddenly, I was back in the meditation site. Wow, that guy really does not like me. I wonder though, is this the inner beast everyone seems to be afraid of? On days 15 to 16, I returned to base and told Kakashi about what happened at the meditation site. I revealed to him that I had finally met my inner beast and began to understand why the villagers were so afraid of me. So it looks like you finally got to meet the nine-tailed fox, huh? And it looks like you already knew about him. Why are you keeping secrets? So what if I know? That's not the problem here. You need to continue training so that you'll get strong enough to face Orochimaru. Let's finally head to the dojo. But why, Kakashi? Why won't anyone tell me more? Kakashi brushed it off and moved towards the broken dojo. Oh, wow. Look at this place. It's completely destroyed. We took one look around and knew before we started more training, we needed to fix this place up. We got to work and it started to come along great. I was still upset about the nine-tailed fox and his displeasure with me. So I then began to construct a statue of the nine tails. I know he doesn't like me, but maybe if I make this for him, I can start to learn more. This will be a good spot to meditate and talk with him. Hopefully, one day, me and him will finally be able to connect. On days 17 to 18, an old villager came to Kakashi and I and asked for our help. She told us that her son is missing, and she doesn't know where he is. She begged us to find him and bring him back to her. When she left, I revealed to Kakashi that I had seen Orochimaru with a villager a few days ago. Maybe that's who she was talking about. If that is true, then her son is in grave danger. I need to go and save him immediately. I'll come with you. I can help. It's my responsibility to. No, Fozo. You're not strong enough yet. You have great ambition, but you don't have the power to control yourself. I begrudgingly listened to him. It wasn't fair. Kakashi ran off to go. To show the villagers I was not the monster they thought I was, I decided to build up part of the village. I worked on expanding the farm and even brought back a group of cows. I built the cows a pen to live in, but it wasn't long until I grew tired of waiting around at the village. I looked around at the other villager and she seemed so sad that her son was missing. I decided to disobey Kakashi's orders. And plus, I knew that we would be stronger together. I ran after Kakashi and eventually caught up to him, maintaining a distance so I wouldn't be spotted. However, I was still close enough to help him if something were to go wrong. I continued to follow Kakashi toward Orochimaru's base, when suddenly, Kakashi was stopped by a loud growling noise. A few mutant zombies arrived out of the forest. They were huge and started to overpower Kakashi. I can't just watch helplessly while he's getting attacked. I need to do something. I threw some shurikens and damaged a couple of them. Ozo, what are you doing here? I told you that you're not ready for this. That does not matter right now. We need to take care of these giant zombie things. I used my shadow clones, and together, we took the rest of them down. But Kakashi was not happy about it. You disobeyed my order. You need to go back to base now. No, Kakashi. It's my fault that the villager went with Orochimaru in the first place, and I'm going to help get him out of there. You need me, and I've already made up my mind. <sighs> We're almost there anyways. Come on, let's go. But stay close. Awesome. Okay, let's go save that villager. On days 21 and 23, we finally snuck into Orochimaru's base. We're this close to saving that villager. We saw Orochimaru walking our way, so we hid behind some rocks. Let's follow him. He might lead us to the villager. We followed him inside the base until he led us into a room. And look, here they all are. He must have been capturing villagers for a while. Don't worry. We're gonna get you all out of here. Suddenly, there was screaming in the other room and footsteps. Ozo, we need to hide, and fast. We hit again, and Orochimaru appeared with a zombie. Where did that come from? When they walked away, we came out of hiding and tried to free the villagers. Come on, come on, open already. Fancy seeing you guys here. Ozo, run. I'll take care of them. Kakashi used his jutsu on him, but it didn't look like it hurt that much. Then, Orochimaru used his, and it dealt a lot more damage. He's running out of hearts. Stop hurting my sensei. I got really mad, and I felt myself changing. Suddenly, I transformed into the the beast from my meditation. What? But as I transformed, I blacked out. Oh, where am I? Not at Orochimaru's base? Is that? I suddenly noticed the beast from my meditation, and he was destroying the village. Why would he do that? Someone needs to stop him. Right on cue, there was a man who was running towards him. Wait a minute. Is that my father? He suddenly summoned a ball of air and threw it at the beast. It must be my father. But who is that other lady with him? My mom. There was also a baby that was near both of them. I think I'm in the past. The beast disappeared as it got close to the baby. This must have been what the beast was referring to. That baby must be me. Suddenly, there was a huge flash, and I woke up back inside our base. Kakashi, you're okay. I had the crap.
craziest dream. Happy to see that you're doing okay, Fozo. What happened, Kakashi? Where are all the villagers at? Are they okay? You released the beast inside you, and it used its power to stop Orochimaru. You were out of control. The villagers we saved were grateful, but they were terrified of your power. Great. Now I'm back to square one. I need to control the beast if I want the villagers to trust me again. I went to the statue of the fox and continued building it. I need more answers. After I finished building, I sat down and began to meditate. I knew I needed to learn more about him and what happened with my family. On days 27 to 29, I began to meditate and entered my mind once again, where the beast was held. You again. I need answers. I use a special power inside of me, and I think you have something to do with it. You mean my power, and yes, it was nice to be free once again. Free again? Wait, so when I used that power, I unleashed you? Who do you think defeated all those giant snakes? It surely wasn't you. I thought back, and he was right. It must have been nine tails I accidentally unleashed all those days ago. Listen, weakling, I'm the nine-tailed fox. I was created to hurt people, and I would have kept doing that too if it wasn't for your stupid parents who trapped me inside of you. Now be gone. You're starting to annoy me. I woke up back at the statue. Dang it. What am I supposed to do if I can't use my own powers? I need to find a way to control it. I went to the base and told Kakashi about my situation. Your own power, huh? Actually, I think I might know someone who could help. You do? Yes. There is a toad called Fukasaku. He taught me everything I know about my energy. Here, Fuzo. Take this map. Find Fukasaku and tell him that I sent you. Be careful, though. You're gonna be on your own for this one. I took the map from Kakashi and prepared for my journey to find Fukasaku. I went into a cave and mined some more iron. I used the iron to craft myself a chest plate, pants, and helmet. I left the cave and followed the map to find the toad. I began my journey when suddenly, the day turned to night instantly. Standing in front of me was also the guy from my dream. So, you're the guy that I'm having all these visions about. Greetings, nine-tailed boy. I am Madara, and you are still weak. That is not true. I'm gonna be the most powerful ninja this world has ever seen. Good that your training starts now. He began to attack me. He used his fire jutsu and it dealt some serious damage. I used my shadow clone technique, but it wasn't very effective. Madara used a huge flame and it took out all of the clones. You are too weak, boy. As long as you don't use the nine tails power to the fullest, you will only suffer against me. Am I really gonna have to depend on that fox? Oh well, let's try. I try to summon the beast from within me, but I was unable to. Well, there goes that plan. He continued to attack me, and I realized I was only down to a few hearts. Continue to grow strong, because once you are, then you will be used to I will never help you. He <laughs> laughed and used his power to send me flying. On days 33 to 35, I landed in an ice biome. I barely have any hearts left, and I know that I need to regain my strength. Suddenly, I was attacked by some strange dog creatures. I didn't have enough hearts to fight back against them, so I began to run. They chased after me. Hot on my tail. I was gonna have to try and lose them. I spotted a cave, hoping they wouldn't follow me inside. I watched as the creatures ran right past the cave. Phew, that was a close one. I began to explore the cave, looking for anything I could. The cave was dark, but luckily, I still had some torches on me. I began to light up the area. And to my surprise, there were some mushrooms on the cave floor. Wow, might not be ramen, but it still will definitely get my hearts back. I collected some mushrooms and used them to craft some mushroom stew. I began eating it, and it restored my hunger and health. I could feel my strength returning to me. Wow, that really hit the spot. Before leaving, I looked around and found some diamonds. There weren't many, so I had to be smart about what I crafted. I decided to use them to craft a diamond sword. Maybe this would come in handy next time I fought Madara. I continued to follow the map and ran out of the ice biome. I finally made it to the location where the toad is supposed to be. But there is a slight problem. This place is full of toads. How am I supposed to know which toad is going to train me? I ventured throughout the toad village. Where could he be? Suddenly, I saw a small green toad with a cloak around him near a pond. Yep, I think this guy might be the guy. Hey, do you know uh, Kakashi by any chance? He told me he did. And that this place would be a place where I can unlock more of my power. So you're this Fojo ninja that Kakashi Boyo told me about. Name's Fukasaku. And yes, it's possible for you to tap into a stronger side of yourself. Awesome. What's first? Fighting a giant toad? Some cool new techniques? Meditation. Meditation? You need to meditate at a different location and concentrate. Do that and you'll unlock your power in no time. Aw, oh, man. You gotta be kidding me. Where to first? He pointed me in the right direction. I traveled to the top of a mountain and started to meditate. I don't feel anything. I guess I should try somewhere else. The next location I went to was a 
a waterfall. I started to meditate in the middle of the waterfall and still felt nothing. I returned back to the pond to talk to Fukusaku. Nothing's working. Is meditation even going to make me stronger? You need to concentrate your energy if you want to reach your next power. Sage mode. Sage mode? Fukusaku told me to try using one of the shadow clones and meditate with that. Huh. I'll give it a try. I used my shadow clone jutsu and the clone headed back up toward the mountain. Once there, we started to meditate and I started to feel a tingling sensation. Oh, uh, what's happening? I opened my eyes and I realized that I was in my next phase. Sage mode. Yes. I finally did it. I can let out my next power. Rasengan. I feel so much stronger now. On days 39 to 41, I thanked Fukusaku and left the Toad Village to go back to base. I arrived at the base and told Kakashi about my Sage Mode. Look what I can do now. I went into Sage Mode and created a bunch of Shadow Clones. And with them, I started to expand the base more. Now I can have a lot of the heavy lifting. That's impressive, Fosa. While you were away... Orochimaru's been busy. What do you mean by that? Kakashi told me that he's attacked a nearby sand village. I would go handle it myself, but my hands are tied protecting our village. Does that mean you want me to go and take care of it? Kakashi nodded and told me he thinks I am ready. Don't worry, Kakashi. I won't fail you. Before I went to go save the village, I should definitely build up my strength and armor. I gathered some sheep from the farm and made some mutton to eat. After that, I went to a nearby cave and mined some more diamonds. I completed my set of diamond tools and used a leftover to craft some diamond boots. This should be enough. I left the cave and headed out towards the sand village. I arrived at the village that was under attack. But to my surprise, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I made my way inside and the villagers were confused as to why I was here. They were grateful for my arrival. They heard many rumors of my powers and the help I had been doing at the Greenleaf village. It was a nice change to be welcomed instead of immediately hated when I showed up. Since there was no trouble here, I started to get ready to leave when Orochimaru arrived. Perfect. You are here. What are you doing here? Our plan has worked. Plan? What plan? The plan where I defeat you again. He began to attack me. I started to use my new power on him, and I can tell that I was at least powerful enough to hurt him. So you've become more powerful. <laughs> He continued to attack me, and I started to get angry. I felt this surge of power running through my body, and I transformed into the Nine Tails Fox. Wait, but I'm still here. I didn't pass out this time. Unfortunately, I lost complete control of my body, and I began to destroy the village. Oh, no, no. Please, please stop. Silly boy, our plan has once again succeeded. Orochimaru started to flee the village, and as much as I wanted to go after him, I couldn't control myself and continued to destroy the rest of the village. On days 45 to 46, I returned back to normal and realized the destruction I'd caused. What have I done? All these villagers don't have a home now and it's because of me. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I gave them coordinates to the hidden leaf village in case they needed a new place to stay and I left. I then returned back to the base, embarrassed with myself. I continued to work on the Nine-Tailed statue. I needed to get my mind off things and talk to Nine-Tails. He can't destroy the world like this. I finished giving the statue another upgrade and sat down to meditate. I arrived at the red prison where Ninetales was being held. He looked at me, smiling. I've seen that statue of me you were working on. Thanks, Weekly. I will now allow you to speak for now. Listen, Ninetales. I've gotten a lot stronger since the last time we spoke. But what's the problem with you? Why would he do that to that village? First off, my name's Karama. And second, I have no obligation to help you and the villagers in your trivial matters. Okay, Karama. Nice to meet you, but I think it would be better to work together to help people instead of them fearing us. Those humans have done nothing but use me. They never helped. Why should I help them? This conversation is meaningless now. Goodbye. Wait, I'm not done speaking yet. Ugh. Great. He kicked me out. After my talk with Kurama, I returned to the base to talk with Kakashi. I told him about Orochimaru and what had happened at the village. I am disappointed. Not with you, but myself. I shouldn't have pushed you so hard. He was just too powerful, and his attacks had made me angry. I didn't want to use the nine cells, but he came out anyway. I knew you required more training, but I believed with your newfound power you could control it. Don't worry, Kakashi. We can still make things right. Kakashi and I began to gather materials together to bring to the village. We also gathered some of the food from our farm to 
bring it to them, as well as seed to help with the crops. We set off toward the village, but Kakashi stopped me along the journey as night was falling. Uh, look at the moon. This is not good. I looked up and noticed that the moon was red again. It had to be Madara. He must be gaining more strength. We have to act quickly. On days 51 to 53, we returned to the village I had destroyed. The villagers came out of the village and refused to let me inside. Kakashi defended me and told the villagers it was not my fault at all, but also his as well. I apologized to them again, and we told them that we were here to make things right. The villagers were reluctant, but eventually agreed to let us inside. Once inside, Kakashi and I really got to see the aftermath of the destruction. This was no place to live. We invited them back to our base. They agreed, and we all traveled back. Once we were back, Kakashi and I began to work on some new buildings for the desert villagers. We worked together and rebuilt several of the houses. After that, I went to our farm and began to make it much larger. We were even adding more types of seeds. I crafted the wheats I had brought into bread and began to hand it out to the villagers. I knew this would keep them from starving while the new crops grow back. I was approached by one of the village elders. Fozo, we are sorry for how we treated you after your fight with Orochimaru. I understand. I cannot control myself, and I destroyed half your village. Yes, but without you, Orochimaru would have destroyed it all, and who knows what else. I thank the villager for being so understanding of what had happened. It felt good to be liked by them once again. On days 54 to 56, I woke up. As I was getting ready to leave, the village elder approached me again. We built you something as a thank you. He dropped me some explosive kunai. Wow, this could really come in handy. I thanked the villager and headed out. As I was traveling, I spotted Orochimaru. He looked like he was performing some kind of strange jutsu. Hey, what are you doing? Ah, Fuzo. Return for more punishment. It is you who will be punished. <laughs> Orochimaru continued his jutsu, and he summoned massive skeletons. They began attacking me, shooting massive arrows and swinging large hammers at me. I used my diamond sword when they were close, and used my Rasengan, as well as kunai, to hit them at range. A few more hits, and I was able to take them down. While I was fighting the skeletons, I hadn't noticed that Orochimaru had escaped. He must fear that I'm getting more powerful than he is. On days 57 to 59, I returned back to my base. I was extremely excited about taking down Orochimaru's minions, but I wanted to make sure I would be able to take him on. I went to a nearby cave and began searching for diamonds to complete my diamond armor. I searched the cave and eventually was able to find them. And look at that. There's my full set of diamond armor. Afterwards, I returned back home and all the villagers were extremely happy to see me. The other village had talked to them about me defending them. One villager stopped me as I was passing. Aww. He explained to me that his son had some kind of sickness and needed a special medicine that could be found at a nearby river. Sickness? This had to be related to Madara and Orochimaru. I knew it was my duty to help all those in need, so I headed off. I arrived at the river and began searching for the medicine. The villager told me that it was something I would be able to find at the bottom of the river. He said it almost looked like a bottle. I then dove down and saw a bottle on the floor of the ocean. I picked it up, and sure enough, it was the medicine he was looking for. I began traveling back to the village to give the villager the medicine he needed. I returned to my base, and to my shock, it was swarming with undead mobs. How did this happen while I was gone? The villager from earlier approached me. Hey, uh, I caught the medicine at least. But the villager didn't answer. Instead, he started to levitate and then revealed himself to be Madara. It was a trick to get me away from my base so that he could attack. You foolish boy. This place will suffer because of you. He began to attack me, and he was still very powerful despite my diamond armor and upgraded forms. You are almost ready. I just need to draw it from you. He continued to use jitsus on me that I'd never seen before. He hit me again, and I fell to the ground, feeling so weak. The time has come. I thought this was the end until Kakashi showed up and began to attack him. Naruto, you have to get these people out of here. You're not strong enough to fight him alone. I can hold him off. Now get going. I did as my sensei commanded. You will be taken in his place then. Use the jitsu and hit Kakashi back. Kakashi fell to the ground. Extremely weak. No. Continue your training, Naruto. You will. Kakashi! No! On days 63 to 65, the villagers and I went out to hide in a massive tavern. We made campfires and small huts to stay in. I was feeling defeated and mourned the loss of my sensei and friend. I decided I would construct a monument for him next. He was truly my best friend after all. I needed a way to remember him. Some time had passed and I returned to our base with the villagers and saw how much had been destroyed. Madara truly was a monster. I began to work with some of the villagers to rebuild their homes so that the people would have a a place to stay. Some of the villagers had hid while Madara and his army had attacked. 
He explained to me that while some were lucky enough to hide away, others were taken. He must be bringing them to Orochimaru and his experiments. I made a promise to the villagers that I would get all their people back. I just need to be stronger and understand how to control my powers. I decided it was time I confronted Kurama again. I worked to finish my statue. I was hoping that this would please Kurama and that he would finally understand I needed his help or the world would be doomed. I was back within myself and walked toward Kurama to speak with him. I hope my statue of you is pleasing. I know why you're here, Fozo, and my answer is yes. I will help you. You will? But why? I thought you hated me. Our relationship is a complicated situation, but I will not stand to see Madara succeed. Kurama and I finally came to an understanding after days and days of the opposite. He told me that we would also need the help of his father, the Sage of Six Paths. If we can convince him to help, we'll definitely be able to defeat Madara. Now close your eyes and meditate with me. After opening Kurama's prison, he and I began to meditate together. Suddenly, he and I were teleported to a new world. It was dark and empty. There was no one in sight until we approached a figure completely cloaked in white. Welcome, Fozo. Your world must be in grave danger if you've come to find me. I told the Sage of Six Paths about the situation going on with Madara, but also the relationship Kurama and I had developed recently. So, Madara is trying to use his hypnosis ability to take control. That's not good at all. So that's what he's planning on doing? He's trying to control everyone and everything in the world with his mind. So, Mr. Six Paths, would you be willing to help us? All right, Fozo. I'll lend you my strength now. Close your eyes. I did as he said. I felt a great power rising within me. I opened them, and I was back at my statue. I had a new suit and felt more powerful than ever. I did it. With this new form, I'll definitely be able to defeat my enemies. On days 69 to 71, I need to save these villagers. I said goodbye to the villagers and ran off as fast as I could toward Orochimaru's base. I arrived at Orochimaru's base and quickly made my way inside. I fought through some of his minions, but they were no match for me at this point. I entered the prison where all the villagers were being held captive and Orochimaru was waiting for me. This ends now, you monster. Sage of six paths. How is this possible? Because I told you, I'll become the most powerful ninja in the world and you can't stop me. Orochimaru began to attack me with his jitsu and I realized that I was fast enough to evade most of his attacks. I started to fight back, getting close. This cannot be. I could tell each hit was dealing massive damage to him. He ran off. I almost had him. He was so weak. I was upset that I was unable to finish him, but I looked around at all the villagers who were celebrating my my victory. I freed all of them, and we began to travel back home. I made it back to base with the freed villagers, and I was surprised from applause and cheering. I was surrounded by them. All of them thanked me and praised me for saving them. The village elder approached me and said that we should throw a party in honor of me. Really? Uh, a party? Yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's do it. Everyone from the Hidden Leaf Village entered into my base, and we all started to celebrate. Some of the villagers even gave me some health potions. I can't tell you guys how much this means to me. I'm gonna do what I can to save the world. On days 75 to 77, I was woken up by the sound of screaming villagers. I ran outside, and a villager was running toward my base. He said that the Hidden Leaf Village is being under attack by some kind of undead monster. This has to be Orochimaru's doing. I quickly made my way to the village and saw that there were undead everywhere. I used my shadow clone jitsu to make some clones so I can be better at fighting them off. The clones threw explosive kunai at the undead and took down a number of them. All while this chaos is going on, I saw Orochimaru was watching from the exit. These guys weren't as tough now that I had the power of the Sage of Six Paths. I had used my Rasengan technique to take down the rest of the undead monsters. You are next, Orochimaru. He ran out of the village and I fought him. Where do you think you're going? I followed him right on his tail as he was trying to make it back to his base. He must have realized that he was not getting away because he stopped. There's nowhere left for you to run. Run. I only led you here so that I could finally be rid of you. Orochimaru used a poisonous attack on me. That took a lot of my hearts away. What kind of technique was that? I feel so weak. Yes, Fozo. Soon yours and the Nine Tails' power will finally belong to me and Madara. Not if I have anything to say about it. Suddenly, I felt a surge of power, and I turned into the Ninetales Fox. How is this possible? You can't control this power. I used Rasengan on Orochimaru, and he was taking a lot of damage. This is it, Orochimaru. Say goodbye. I used my final Rasengan on him and dealt the final blow. Farewell, you snake. I transformed back into my 
normal form, and I made my way from the grassy plains and returned to base. On days 81 to 85, I returned back home. The village got a little messed up from those undead monsters, so I created some shadow clones, and we built back up all the buildings that were destroyed. After fixing the buildings, I noticed that all the villagers were looking terrified at the sky. <laughs> They told me that even though it's a brand new day, the sky hasn't turned back into day. Oh no. This was just like my vision. Madara, he's powerful. I have to put a stop to him quick. I just hope I'm not too late. While I was searching, I noticed there was a large beam of light that was pointing towards the red moon. Maybe if I follow this light, I'll find him. I ran toward it as fast as I could. As I continued, I got attacked by some rock golems. Rock golems? Why are you guys attacking me? I saw that the golems' eyes were the same color as the red moon. I need to end this now. I summoned some shadow clones. We use air blast attacks to defeat the rest of the golems. Man, that was exhausting. I need to gain my strength back if I want to face Madara. I continued my journey and found a field full of sheep. Great. I'm starving. I've killed some of the sheep with my diamond sword and cooked some mutton to eat. When I finished eating, I decided to stay in the field for a bit and meditate. I felt my energy rise back to normal through meditation. On days 91 to 94, I finally made it to where the beam of light was. It was in the middle of a rocky biome. I kept looking around the area and approached a giant tree. It was sprouting something. Something red, just like the red moon. That is far enough, Fozo. Madara, what's this with the big tree in the center of this place? Once that tree blooms, this world will finally be under my control. Well, thanks for the intel. Now I know how to save the world by destroying that tree. I summoned some shadow clones to attack Madara. The clones didn't do any damage. Oh no, the tree's fully bloomed, and he knocked me out of the rocky biome. I landed back inside my base. I looked up at the sky, and it instantly changed from night to day. This is strange. Range. I should go take a look around the village. I went around and noticed that none of the villagers were moving. They stood still motionless. I tried talking to the villagers, but they weren't responding. They were just staring at the sky. I looked up at the sky and saw that there was no longer a red eye, but a white one instead. He's hypnotized everyone so that he could take all their energy for himself. I stopped staring at it and ran back into my base. I don't know what to do. I need to talk to Kurama. On day 99, I went to the Kurama statue and sat down to meditate. I went inside my mind and there was Kurama waiting for me. What's wrong, Fozo? All is lost. I failed to stop Madara, and now the world is under his control. Fozo, you accomplished so many things in the past few days. You've been in situations just as dire as this one, but you've always to manage to find a way to win. You're right, Kurama. There were plenty of times where it looked like we were doomed, but I managed to beat the odds against me. With my confidence boosted, Kurama and I both began to meditate. Energy was bursting inside of me, and I felt like I could take on the world. Now go save the world, Fozo. I believe in you. I returned to the real world. From my meditation, it was now or never to save the world. I set off to find Madara. On day 100, I arrived at a massive structure where the beams of light had been traveling to. I walked inside to confront Madara. Ah, there you are, Fuzo. You are the only person left I needed to absorb. Yeah, we'll see about that. I summoned a single shadow clone, and that clone transformed into Kurama. Now we can take down this guy together, Fozo. Kurama attacked Madara with a blast attack. Madara hit us with a giant flame attack, and we were down for the count. Kurama, what do we do? Here, take this. Suddenly, I started overflowing with tons of energy. Where did this come from? I had a meditation clone back in now let's take him down. I concentrated all my energy and launched a giant Rasengan at Madara. The white eye turned back into the sun. We did it.